After the start of the Quiet Apocalypse and the events that led to the death of the town of Milton, Will continued his journey to find Astrid. He was now on a mission to bring the hard case to Perseverance Mills. Emerging from the cave connecting the mountain town to the Mystery Lake region, Will found himself in a tough situation. He was greeted by a massive bear that was moments away from ripping a stranger to pieces. A single shot saved the stranger, at least for now, but placed Will in the bear's crosshairs. No amount of luck would prepare him for the nightmare he was about to face. This is The Long Dark, Wintemu Episode 2, Luminance Fugue. After taking the stranger to safety and bandaging his injuries, he awakens violently from a nightmare. Will attempts to calm him, assuring they were safe. The stranger states that the bear was merely frightened and would return. It seemed that the stranger and the bear had a history together. Will notices the radio, but the stranger tells him that it had not worked for days. With the stranger's injuries being at risk of infection, Will offers to find medicine. The stranger suggests Milton, but Will was all too familiar with the situation there. Instead, the stranger sends Will to Carter Dam to find parts for the radio and medicine for his injuries. Before he departs, the stranger warns Will that the bear will be hunting him. He offers him his rifle, which would only serve to scare the bear away temporarily. He also warns Will that the dam was unstable, most likely from decades of decay. The stranger passes out before Will leaves the cabin. After journeying across the Mystery Lake region, Will arrives at Carter Dam. Just as he approaches the outer gate, the massive bear appears out of nowhere. Holy shit. Quickly closing the gate, Will keeps the old bear from attacking for now. Exploring Carter Dam reveals the devastating toll of decades of decay. Luckily, Will finds some radio parts, a decade-old antibiotic shot, and a locked control room door with a keypad. The journey back to the trapper's cabin would be calm. There, Will gives the stranger the antibiotic shot he found in the dam, which causes him to awaken. Before long, the stranger was ready to start working on the radio. Will asks him about the radio, noting it was military and not the kind civilians would have access to. Despite his efforts to find radio parts, it made no difference. The stranger believes it was a much deeper problem not related to the radio. Shifting away from the first problem, the stranger establishes the importance of dealing with the bear. It was smarter than the average bear, which would hinder their ability to scavenge or look for help. With the bear in the picture, there would be no way to radio the stranger's friend, and Will would have a tough time following Astrid to Perseverance Mills. The stranger would explain, with the help of a local legend, that a special kind of magic was needed to deal with the bear. Not real magic, but something that would work better than a bullet. A spear, more importantly, the same spear used 150 years ago to kill a similar killer bear, was their ticket to eliminating the old bear. The story of the bear and the spear will be told in a separate video. With a new objective to complete, Will embarks on a long journey south towards the hunting lodge along the Broken Railroad. This would require following the railway line through a nearby muskeg. Shortly after entering the edge of Lower Great Bear, Will reaches a derailment with no way to get through. Unfortunately, the old bear had found a way to the other side. The bear decides to push against the train cart Will had entered, knocking it over and knocking Will out cold. The lights. Will awakens to find himself under the Aurora lights. He notices that the lights above the railway line are also on. Further down the line, he encounters his old friend Methuselah once again. Just like before, he speaks about everything that is happening and is confusing as always. Besides the usual nonsense, he warns Will that his encounters with the bear so far are not the final battle in their war, and that the lights are a reckoning. Both of these tips would be immensely important for the rest of his journey. After departing with Methuselah, Will continues until he arrives at the Briar House Maintenance Yard. Not far from there, he would find the Hunting Lodge. Inside the lodge, Will finds the spear, which had broken at some point in time. While in the lodge, the phone will start to ring and then go silent. After leaving the lodge, he makes his way back to the maintenance yard to reforge the spear. 
Most of his journey back was uneventful, until Will reached the tunnel exit from the muskeg to the mystery lake. The bear would be lingering above him on a ledge, staring down at him. Continuing forward, Will would reach the trapper's cabin and find the stranger working on their radio problem. The stranger asks Will if he had seen the aurora and the lights turn back on. He says the aurora would be their key to signaling his friend. Looking over old survey maps, the stranger saw that there are radio transponder towers across the island. Will was curious why there were so many towers here, but the stranger didn't answer. He even made note of the military symbols on the map, but the stranger pivoted back to the towers. He requests Will to bring back three parts from the towers, allowing him to make a signal booster for the radio. Before leaving, Will asks how this would help him find his friend. The stranger makes it very clear that his message to his friend is more important, but he promised to try to radio Perseverance Mills for him. Back in the muskeg, Will travels between each radio tower to grab the parts. Now the bear is actively hunting him, chasing him down wherever he goes. After grabbing the final part, the bear's next charge against Will does not go well for him. The spear is working, but not fast enough. The bear then drags Will back to its den. There, the fight continues. After several stabs with the spear into the bear's chest, the beast finally falls. The old bear is defeated by the 150-year-old legend. I'm... I'm sorry. Exhausted, Will arrives back at the trapper's cabin and passes out. He awakens later that night during an aurora. The stranger gives him the opportunity to make a call to Perseverance Mills. There is a lot of static, but he is able to hear someone from the town. Unfortunately, the person cannot hear Will at all. It seemed like they were speaking to someone else entirely. Will attempts to adjust the signal, but the radio explodes. This was the stranger's only way to message his friend. Instead, he decides that it is up to Will to do it for him. He directs him back to the dam, which would require an aurora to get through. Once he escaped through the dam, he would need to get to Signal Hill in the Pleasant Valley region. There, he would contact Atwood and send a single word message, Wintermute. Then, Will would be able to follow the road to Perseverance Mills. The stranger would stay behind to recover before taking care of a personal errand. This would be the last time they speak. With the bear dead and gone and the message for Atwood, Will returns to Carter Dam to begin the process of fixing the elevator. This would require an aurora to occur. Just outside the dam, Methuselah once again appears before Will. After one final conversation about the apocalypse that stands before them, they part ways again. Once the elevator was repaired, Will carefully makes his way around the now live and deadly electrical wires to the lower part of the dam. At the very end, he meets an unsavory stranger. After a nasty hit to the back of the head, Will finds himself in the presence of an escaped convict. He makes it clear that he despises the locked hard case simply because it is locked. He beats Will, demanding to know what it contained. Of course, he had no idea what was inside. Astrid never told him. After one final swing with the back of an axe, Will is knocked out cold once again. Well, don't worry, pilot. You'll be with her soon. This is the end of the Long Dark, Wintermute Episode 2, Luminance Fugue. This episode is quite different compared to the previous. Do Not Go Gentle helps Will to reflect on himself and those around him. The similarities between him and Grey Mother were enough to show him the road he was taking. Reconciliation would be his savior, driving his need to find Astrid and avoid Grey Mother's mistakes following their respective tragedies. Episode 1 was more emotionally driven as Will faced his own demons while also helping Grey Mother face her own. Luminance Fugue helps Will to reflect and rely on the past to find a way forward. History teaches them that sometimes a massive problem requires simplicity. History repeats itself, as we all know. With the help of a local legend and the long dead dam, the two managed to create a glimmer of hope out of tall tales and industrial hubris. On a final note, I want to briefly talk about the title of the episode, Luminance Fugue, which is very interesting. Luminance relates to the state of being luminous, which relates to light. Fugue can have several meanings, but I think the way it is used here refers to the disturbed state of consciousness where one performs actions they are not aware of. 
More specifically, I think Fugue here is referring to the disturbance of nature itself. I think together, Luminance Fugue refers to the return of the aurora and electricity it generates. This temporary reversal of the damage done to the Earth only brings a brief period of normalcy in the darkness of the night. Even the return of the lights brings more challenge and danger to the quiet apocalypse. Over the next few weeks, I will be covering additional topics that accompany Episode 2, including the story of the Bear and the Spear, Jeremiah, Methuselah, and one video that asks and answers the question, what is Wintermute? If you enjoyed this video or want to see any of these future videos, please make sure to comment, like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so I can keep making them.